and welcome back to my channel. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm sorry if this video looks a little weird. I don't have my tripod right now because I'm moving in three days, so like everything's packed up basically. Um, so, but I just wanted to come on here and make a final Antlers Downloads Awareness Month video. Um, this month has been really, really amazing and challenging for me. Um, I graduated from college, I got into rabbinical school, um, and I've had some significant setbacks with my health. Um, I think what I wanted to come on here and say is that, you know, there's only so much that can be done at this point for people with EDS. Um, I use a wheelchair, that's something that can be done for me. Um, but I don't currently have access to pain medication, um, which would significantly improve my quality of life. And the reason for that is um, because there is a crackdown on people with chronic pain. No one wants to prescribe medications to people with chronic pain. And in my case, I cannot take any type of NSAID because I have ulcers. So really, I have I, the only thing that's left for me is narcotic pain medication, and no one wants to prescribe that. Um, and the other things that I encounter for my dysautonomia, um, you know, I've had a very challenging time managing that. Um, I recently started a new medication, but unfortunately the side effect of the medication for me is that I can't sleep. Um, I haven't been able to sleep very well, um, like falling asleep, um, in like almost two weeks. I just can't do it. it, it just doesn't, it won't happen for me. Um, and I feel like maybe I need to switch um, medications um, to something else, although there's no, I don't have any medication options left. I've exhausted everything. And um, that that really sucks. Um, and then, obviously, my biggest issue with, for me personally, of having EDS is gastrointestinal. And I recently discovered that the last GES test that I had was had a bunch of mistakes on it and is not accurate. And therefore, I'm going by the test that I had originally had. Um, that I had diagnosed with gastroparesis. And so, um, I don't meet the threshold for a gastric pacemaker, and even if I did meet that threshold, I don't think I would, um, I don't think I would get one, because, um, the complications are really high. Um, so, I, you know, I'm still trying to pursue a tube, and it's hard, and I wouldn't lie. Having EDS is hard. It's hard because a lot of the time your doctors don't know what you're talking about. I saw a new primary care person this week and although she was very lovely, um, she didn't know anything. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to find a PCP who knows what um, they're talking about, who knows what EDS is, um, who can help me coordinate all my care and that's I don't know if I'm gonna get there you know soon moving to a new city is really hard when you have a chronic illness um, I think I'm gonna make a video about that actually um, but the thing is finding new medical care um, my orthopedist recently retired I've been seeing him since I was 12 years old um, and so I have to find someone new and that's just, it's weird to me because I've been dealing with this disease since I was five years old and I've had medical professionals who were with me for a very long time. My old primary care physician, I was with her from like fifth grade to when I was 19 and that's when I found someone new. And I just, I don't know, that's, that's a long time for me. My, my, my orthopedist was with me from 
when I was 12 to now, he was still treating me. And, you know, transitioning from, you know, pediatric care to adult care is hard. And transitioning from one medical provider to another is hard. And um, with EDS, it can be more complicated because there are not many medical professionals that are versed in this disease. And, you know, family history has a lot to do with it. My mom uh, passed away when she was 50, almost 50. Um, and, you know, she had anorexia, but she also, I think, had EDS. And so the, the combination of those two diseases just, it killed her. I think it killed her more rapidly than it would have if, she, you know, she had, uh, she didn't have it. Um, I have a, a, a very, you know, bad family history of medical problems. Um, my father um, had brain cancer and died when he was 60. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, I, uh, I don't know. I think I also want to make a video about, you know, having a limited life expectancy. What that feels like. Um, and for me, I mean, just kind of, you know, talking, um, it feels like I'll be my parents. Both my parents died before they were 65. And um, three out of four of my grandparents died before they were 75. So, you know, I, I don't have a lot to go. I have one grandmother who's 89. I have a cousin who's 95. And my great grandmother loved it because she was 90. The only pure part of my family that doesn't have any medical problems is my maternal grandmother. And that's it. Everybody else has really bad medical problems. And even my grandmother's father died of cancer. So I don't know. What I do know is that we need more research. We need more awareness, and we need more funding. Because I don't want to die young, but I feel like I might get there. So if we could all just share a video about EDS, like the one that Ehlers Download Society made, which is a really beautiful and moving video, or tell a friend, or lobby our congressperson, maybe we could get to a point where EDS had more fun, for more research, so that more doctors knew about it, so that it was diagnosed more often. I recently read a story um, where a woman diagnosed herself with EDS after seeing a story on Imager. And that's kind of how it happened to me too. And so, you know, I think we need more awareness because if P if EDS was just as common a disease that people knew about as diabetes or fibromyalgia or multiple sclerosis, then maybe we'd have more funding, more research, and more people diagnosed. I sit here today as someone who in three days we'll be moving to a new city to start at a new school and doing more things. And I feel very, very blessed. But I also sit here as someone who today has very inadequate medical care and fears for their life every day. And I think that's what a lot of people with EDS go through. There's a part of their life that's really great. And there's a part of their life that sucks. And slowly, the part of your life that sucks eats up the part of your life that's really great. And I can already see that happening too. So tell a friend about EDS. And maybe together, we can do something. Be sure to give this video a like, 
comment and subscribe for more videos. And um, I'll talk to you next time.